Ah, Tokyo Revengers. It's been a while. Been a while, I mean a while for me to actually talk about this now. No cause for alarm for people who may have seen my earlier posts about me reviewing shows this week. Tokyo Revengers doesn't fall into that list. Matter of fact, I'll just be straight up and say that me being late to these reviews is on me. Episode 1, I was late because I googled it and it appeared when I converted the tie that it came out Wednesday. Not knowing it came out on Tuesday, so I missed that one. And last week, straight up forgot. Me knowing when shows drop is typically me updating my Crunchyroll and see what, what drops on there. Like it wasn't for the fact that Undead Unlock also, also comes out on 2 p.m. on Fridays, I would have missed that one as well. So yeah, I just dropped the ball with the new Tokyo Avengers reviews. But I'm here now. What's good, y'all? Main Man Master Set here, leading the Master Knights on the round table of complete ones to scratch this bit. And we're here with Tokyo Avengers Season 2 continue. I thought this would be like a whole new season, like season three, but to be fair, season one wasn't that far long ago compared to the wait between season one and two. And on Hulu, they typically do a better job of actually separating the difference between cores and shows, and it just kind of just has to keep rolling on. So I just gonna keep going with season two, episode 16. However, this is a one, two, three episode reviews, first impressions, blah, blah, blah. I'm wasting enough time talking, let's do it. This part of Chuggle of Avengers and his first three episodes already gave us a lot, a lot to unpack it, let alone talk about. When it comes to that, the bulk of that could be centered around Izuna Kurokaro, the man who is not black. However, darker skin tone with the white hair is the leader of Tenjiku. However, before we do that, let's get to everybody's favorite fuckboy in the whole city, and not anime at this time. It's not that deep, but fuck Kisaki. Kisaki pulled up at the end of last season, fucking everything up. Joey Tenjiku had to get kicked out of Toman. Continuing this season saying that he's gonna make his own Toman. And while this hasn't been confirmed yet, so I guess it's really just a belief right now. However, the biggest thing about Kisaki right now is the possibility of him also being able to go back and forth through time. Which plays a much bigger role with us in this season believing that even if he was able to go back and forth in time, he no longer could because he's dead in the future. Just for us to find out in the future that that information was revised and we are wrong and he is still alive. In the worst way possible, but more on that in a second. Not necessarily sure how many, how much strings Kasaki is really pulling when it comes to the Tolman in the future, but not only is he second in command, he's pretty much the reason why Hina keeps dying. Which, for anybody who forgot, is the original reason why we started all this in the first place. We all know saving Hina does mean pretty much trying to save everybody now. However, it is what it is. Gang warfare, what can you do? Now back to Tenchiku. This group, red jacket wearing clowns, basically, they're being ran by Kuakawa. Who I'm jumping around like hell, don't care. Is the eighth generation leader of the Black Dragon before Taiju got it. Also, picking it up after Shinjiro, Mikey's brother used to have it. Like I said, jumping around, but he's also Emma's brother, older brother, Emma, the half sister for Mikey. So now it's family ties, family drama, half brothers aside, freaking Kurokawa and Mikey are related. We come to find that Mikey's brother, Shibisho, his older brother, who was killed, ended up starting Black Dragon in the first place. Taiju told us that in the future. Who was boss in that suit, by the way? Big ass suit in the middle of the best VIP table in the back, smoking and shit, looking like a mob boss. But back to Kurokawa, apparently, when he took over Black Dragon, he just, he wasn't supposed to get it. Shibisho was supposed to just give it to Mikey. So, yeah. Now, since Ember was three at the time, I'm really just explaining the previous episode now, am I? Emma got integrated into Maki's family, but Kurokawa did not. So Kurokawa was just abandoned. Fuming with jealousy and envy, he went out to Mikey. But the reason Tomei reformed in the first place because Maki couldn't get Black Dragon because Kurokawa got it, but Maki took out Kurokawa as well as Black Dragon. So Kasaki be damned. This whole day with Tenjiku Red Coats coming out to Tomei right now is Kurokawa's big revenge plan. Presumably though, because we never have yet to hear from the horse's mouth. Now when it comes back to Takamichi, him being now the first division leader and his old friends integrated to the top of that group is really becoming a hindrance. Because these people are being targeted not only because of their involvement with Takamichi, but because they are the first division of Tobin, that besides Baki and his main crew, he's pretty, they're pretty much the first ones to get ran through. Well, presumably the first ones you gotta run through if you wanna get to Mikey, which is obviously the main goal of both Kisaki and Kurokawa. Couldn't even be so much as the second division, it just had to be the first, huh? And because of this, these guys have been beating up on multiple occasions just this season. Not to mention kidnapped at the end of this episode. 
Talk about the fifth division lead that's gonna come. All of a sudden, he's working for Kurokawa. Is that, is that what we're doing now? Is that what he, he said Kurokawa thinking of doing more work? But we, we integrated by interacting members of the tournament, and yet it's our own people betraying us first. It'd be your own nerves. Now, back when it comes to the time traveler thing. Now, Takamichi was supposed to be on his last time loop right, right in the beginning. At least that's what he promised us at the end of part two. I mean, season two, part one. Or just season two. I, I don't know how I'm going to call this yet. But apparently not, because while it was 100% necessary, especially now, Takamichi ended up going back to the past again. I mean, going back to the future again. However, that was indeed his last time loop, because it was not up to Takamichi. If you've been watching it, you already know. But when Takamichi went back up there, he found Taiju, had their conversation about the backstory of the Black Dragon. The second they left that thing, because they was about to get jumped by Tolman, Kasaki shows up. Yeah, we figured out that Kasaki was still alive minutes before coming to see him coming to see us. That big reveal, well, I guess I, I guess we was able to brace ourselves. I guess Takamichi and Nauta is confronted by Saki and his right hand man. Yes, Kurokawa also showed up. But I'm talking about the Magnum. This man pulled a strap out of Takamichi and tried to shoot him in the face right then and there. Now to move Takamichi out of the way and Nauta took the bullet instead. Yes, the second time with Kasaki took Takamichi dead in the eye and tried to blow his head off. Kurokawa coming out of the mix there, basically saying that Nauta was supposed to be his kill, but Kasaki tells him that he just moved Takamichi out of the way. But not getting his own hands dirty, Takamichi Kurokawa brings out Takamichi's homeboy. It's even in the past his homeboy that ended up having to join Tenshi Q because Takamichi didn't recognize him the first time, but they actually grew up together. The past haunts so strongly in this show ever since the first part of season two. I thought Taiji's family ties with something. And he, yes, pulls the trigger for Kurokawa and shoots Takamichi. And as they're all walking up to get the job is done, they're both, Takamichi and Naoto's alive, but just enough for one more handshake. That before Naoto telling that Takamichi that he, originally he had no faith in him, but Takamichi easily made a believer out of him. And in a tearful handshake, right before Kasaki realized that both were still alive, Takamichi is able to go back to the past. However, he runs up on Naoto in the past and tries to shake his hand again just to go back to the future, just to confirm that Naoto didn't actually die. However, Boris Spears confirmed. Now to end the future is dead. Never mind us thinking that Kasaki was possibly dead in the future, that's why he couldn't come back. No, but stopping them from going back and forth to the present and future is the key to doing so. Why kill the guy that's already on the outside where you can just kill the doorman and let the people in in the first place? Interesting way to look at it. Also, who says Takamichi survived in the present? You know, now to die, but hell, they both got shot. So we are officially, officially, officially now on our last thing, our last time loop. Because quite frankly, if this isn't the last time loop, Takamichi can't leave. So yeah, Takamichi gotta stay in the past until he handles it. And if he's unable to handle it, this is where it all is. You don't get no resolution and failure. You gotta, you gotta win or lose. Now there is one uh, big scene here that's probably gonna play a much bigger role later on. The fact that while Takamichi was believing he was talking to Nauta about what was going on, Nauta already left, which Takamichi outside looking in, in a situation I already was acting weird as hell, because okay, you blame him. It's the middle of the night, though. What you don't ask me for a handshake and crying. Takamichi was then just talking to himself. However, that before he now comes down the slide and hits him in the back. While Takamichi was muttering to himself about how Nauta was dead in the future, how he was going back and forth looping, he now heard that. Now, let's be real. Three and a half seasons in, Hina didn't even begin to hear the gist of it. But she heard enough to ask Takamichi how old he is for real. And he answered honestly, 26. Now that dude ain't 13. There's a grown nigga in that boy. When you talk about old soul and a young body eater, that's a grown ass man. Hina asking Takamichi if he gets if he proposes to her and they get married in the future. Hina, you did hear Takamichi say the reason he's doing this in the first place is to save your life, right? No, he ain't proposed to you. You're dead. Like I said, now we gotta save everybody, but hell, that excludes you, woman. Arguably, now we gotta save Nalta first. Now, Hina walks off, and Takamichi is about to act, talk to her again about the future, but she tells him that she didn't hear anything, and she just walks off. Which, I would say is some kind of epic foreshadowing, but epic foreshadowing in this show is just bad omens. I hate to just assume the worst, and God forbid, no spoilers, y'all, but... If we lose Hina in the past, you know that's definitely a wrap, right? Never mind going back to the future and seeing everything's okay. Anybody who dies now, that's it. 
But it's been 10 minutes and I've covered a whole lot so far. Yeah, man, this season has been very much packed so far. Even if it has been mostly information heavy more than anything. Damn, there was a lot. Of, it was a lot. I'm more likely going to resume weekly reviews next week. Just in case I don't, just know I'm keeping a close ear and eye to this. And you definitely will be hearing from me again. They're gearing up and making it sound like this is the last season. I, I, I don't remember if they confirmed that this was going to be the last season or not. But hey, it definitely does feel like we're on the home stretch. Since we officially, 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 officially can't go back now. So one way or another, let's get it done, y'all. And the plan I told you to do years ago. Takamichi's official plan right now to save everybody. Kill Kurosaki. Kurosaki. Kurokawa. And kill Kasaki. Kill Kasaki. Off that, nigga. I've been saying this for years, nigga. Back when I used to review this show in the back of a freaking hair salon. I told you to take that fool out. It's time, baby. It's time. I'll leave you with that. Fuck that, nigga.